So today we're planning on giving you guys a little bit of a history lesson. We do a lot of science here at the Dickinson County Nature Center, but if you're off of school, maybe you need some history too. So the Dickinson County Conservation Board has an agreement with the State Historical Society of Iowa to staff the Abbey Gardner Cabin and Museum in Arnold's Park. Um, and while it's closed for the season, we actually brought in some of the artifacts to the Nature Center. Um, so we have some of the story about Abby Gardner uh, and some of her interpretation uh, written out here. And so we want to share some of that story with you. Uh, so if you want to go down to Arnold's Park in the summer, it's a great way that you can get a lot more in-depth detail. But just to give you some basics of the story, uh, so it all started a long time before the Spirit Lake Massacre, which happened in March of 1857. There was a lot of things that were leading up to it. You may have heard that Native Americans and settlers uh, did not get along very well. There was lots of mistrust and a lot of issues on both sides. Um, but Ink Beduda was the Native American uh, Wapakuti band leader uh, who was a most known for the Spirit Lake Massacre. Uh, so he was born around the beginning of the 19th century, um, some say 1797, some say 1805, uh, but his dad, uh, Wanda Sapa, was actually the leader of the Wapakuti. Um, he died um, and then Ink Bajuda rose to a leadership role under who they think was his brother. There was an Indian named Sinto Minaduda, and they think that that was Ink Bajuda's brother. What happened was there was a settler named Henry Lott, um, and he had some issues with Sinto Minaduda. Basically, uh, Sinto Minaduda came to Lott's neighborhood. Um, there were some issues there, and Henry Lott actually blamed Sinto Minaduda for killing his family and burning down his house. Turned out that that actually wasn't true at all. Um, the people went to Henry Lott's house, found that although it had been uh, robbed uh, and ravaged by some of the local Native Americans, um, that his Henry Lott's family was fine. However, one of his sons had tried to escape during that time when the Native Americans were there, and he did die from exposure to the elements. Henry Lott's wife died about a year or two later, um, but he always blamed that on the Wapakuti Band of Indians and Sinto Minaduda. So a few years later, he actually was still holding this grudge, invited Sinto Minaduda to hunt some elk, and ended up killing Sinto Minaduda and his entire family. So because they do think that that was Inkpaduda's brother, Inkpaduda was very angry, completely understandably. Um, and he kind of held a grudge against the settlers in the area. Um, so again, both sides, settlers were a little bit scared of the Indians. Native Americans were also uh, scared and mad that the settlers were coming to their land. Um, but Abby Gardner and her family were a part of those settlers. They didn't have any issues with the Native Americans. Uh, but they did come to the Okaboji area where they settled on Pillsbury Point, which is what it's now called, which is on West Lake Okaboji. And that was an actually area that was a favorite for the Native Americans at that point. They used to use it as kind of a rest stop and an area where they would stay during the winter um, and an area where they would hunt. So the Native Americans um, had found that there were settlers taking over one of the areas that they really liked here in the Okaboji area. So Abby's family had moved from New York and then they went to Ohio to pick up her sister who was married and had two kids. And then they made their way over to Iowa to Clear Lake and then into Spirit Lake finally. Uh, so they settled in the summer of 1856. However, they got there in about July, so they didn't really have time to uh, plant crops and to really prepare for the long winter. Um, they got up the gardener cabin, but uh, Abby's sister and her husband didn't have time to finish their cabin. So they actually moved in with Abby's family. So at one point with another couple of guests that they had staying with them, they had more than 10 people in a 17 by 23 foot cabin. So I want you to try this challenge, measure out 17 by 23 feet at home and imagine 10 or more people living in that one area. That means eating, 
cooking meals, sleeping. Uh, they did all of their schoolwork there. They would have done their chores. You know, the mom would have sewed. Um, so they had all of these people in this one tiny cabin that you can actually still see down in Arnold's Park. But try measuring it out at home and see what you think of that size. So in March, of 1857 because they didn't have a lot of food there. Uh, they were doing some trips down to Fort Dodge and to other areas trying to get some food to bring back to feed everybody over the winter. Well, it was a really, really bad winter and the Native Americans also were really struggling. So Infadudas uh, band was struggling and they were not receiving any monetary annuities from the government. Um, and it even they think that a couple of Inkpaduta's grandchildren died during that winter from starvation. So they had come up to Okaboji, found the settlers there, uh, were looking for some provisions. They'd gone to a couple of the cabins. The gardeners had actually given them some provisions, fed them breakfast one morning. Um, and then when they had left, uh, the gardeners heard some gunshots at a nearby cabin. Uh, so the Native Americans came back again, asked for some provisions. When they went to get it, they shot Abby's dad. Um, and then it started a fight among the gardeners at the cabin and the Native Americans. During that, all of Abby's family was killed and Abby was taken captive. So throughout the Spirit Lake area, four women were taken captive. Uh, many settlers were killed. Uh, at, depends on the record that you look at. Some say that Native Americans were killed as well. So it was a really tragic experience for both sides. Abby ended up staying with Inkva Judah's band for several months and she was only 13 years old. Um, the three other women who were with her, two died, one uh, was rescued and brought back to the Minnesota government. So after three months, there were some Native Americans who were sent to find Abby with Infadudas band. She was in South Dakota at that point, and these rescuers found her. They had some um, different items that were traded for her, and so they actually traded uh, two horses, 12 blankets, two kegs of powder for guns, gunpowder, 20 pounds of tobacco, 32 yards of cloth, 37 and a half yards of calico and ribbon um, and other small articles to get, bring Abby back. Uh, each one of them was paid $1,000 um, and they were all then brought back to Iowa. Uh, Abby was reunited with her sister, Eliza, who happened to be in Springfield, Minnesota during the Spirit Lake Massacre. Uh, so she was not killed and survived that tragic time. Uh, they were reunited. Abby ended up marrying somebody just that fall, so she was only 14 years old, so she was really young when she got married, um, but she spent the rest of her life really trying to preserve her family's legacy and to preserve the history of what had happened to her um, and in the Okaboji area. So she helped to erect the monument that is down in Arnold's Park that you can still see. And she actually started the Abbey Gardner Sharp Cabin and Museum. So she had it as a tourist site and she also uh, preserved her family's cabin. And a lot of things in the cabin are still some of her items. Uh, she even had paintings made that uh, show her experiences with the Native Americans. So if you want to learn a little bit more of the history of the Spirit Lake Massacre, I highly recommend that you check out the Abbey Gardner Cabin and Museum. It's open Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh, you can also find more information at DickinsonCountyConservationBoard.com and can read through the whole story, learn about Abby's rescuers, learn about her life after she was rescued, and get some more of the history behind the settlers and the Native Americans and the relationships that they had. But here's a little history of the Iowa Great Lakes area.